what's happening, YouTube. 12.22, just a little after midnight. I had a uh, <laughs> rough day today. I've already been to bed, and now I'm just getting up. Shit you not. My first cup of coffee. Mm. Little too full. <clears throat> so... And this video is going to be a little rough. So please do me a favor. Don't forget to do this. I got to try to remember this because if I remember, you'll remember. That's all it is, please. So <clears throat> I got stuck in the fucking snow again because the ground's iced up. Couldn't get no traction right out this window. I drove a little too far forward and the front tires beep, sunk in the snow and I couldn't back it out. So stubborn. I'll do it my way. Didn't work out too well. Spent most of the day trying to get that motherfucker out. Had to put a come along up. And I got it out. So Physically, I was exhausted. Which is a good thing for me. When I get physically exhausted, it's, um, it's therapy. Helps with the demons. Man, Kim was rolling around on the floor. So, I fell asleep really early and uh, woke up to some noise. You know, living out here in the country, I'm still got a little getting used to. And so while I was laying in bed, I grabbed my phone and I was flipping through YouTube. -y looking for something to play and set the phone down and just listen while I doze off, right? <clears throat> There's a YouTube channel I follow, Medford Knives. You know, knives. This is a limited edition, by the way. Real special scuba diving knife. Anyway, I was listening to this gentleman speaking from Medford Knives and um, touched my heart, what he was saying. I'm going to link it below. It's political, right? It's, um, it's the truth as far as I'm concerned. And here comes the shit part, right? See, the thing is, baby's mama came to Cali and part of her fucking hustle <clears throat> was to get knocked up in Cali because child support paid double. So she was already planning on stealing my kid before she had a bun in the oven. She got drunk and threw that in my face once. That's how I know. That, that was like some fucking family secret that wasn't supposed to get out, right? And I tell this story because my kid fucked me off. See, the thing is, baby's mom is from Portland, Oregon. And so my daughter was raised in Portland, Oregon. And because she's half Filipino and half white, her political views and her broken makes it so that we'll never speak again. I have no doubt. The last time we spoke, her and I, I was still drinking. I was, I was a wreck, you know. She throws in my face, I'll never speak to you again unless you talk to a shrink. <laughs> I get it. And to a certain extent, she was right. She just didn't know my character. She didn't know I could do this myself. And I did, right? So, baby's mama gets knocked up, steals my kid from me, takes her to... Portland, Oregon, and my kid starts working for an immigration attorney. She hooks up with some fucking dude with a beard, older cat. She never talked about him. Her and I were, we had drifted quite a far, we drifted quite a, quite far apart. And a lot of that had to do with my drinking and had to do with her fucking politics. Whether she admits it or not, I don't give a fuck. So my daughter 
has been arrested in New York City with Black Lives Matter in her black getup in her bag full of fucking hammers and whatever the fucking shit she got arrested with, breaking fucking windows. $100,000 worth of damage, right? You can find it on the fucking gadget. That's I know more about my kid because of the gadget than I do from, from her fucking mouth. She wrote me off so she can go fuck herself. Plain and simple, I don't give a fuck if she's blood or not. It don't matter. She's a fucking train wreck. And here I sit alone, <laughs> hoping one day to have somebody to leave all this to, right? I can be quite bluntly honest about shit because my childhood, right? My kid had a fucking pussy life, a sheltered life. Are you kidding me? College, grandparents to kiss her ass. That little bitch that never knew a hard time. I'm trying to rein it in a little bit. So when I was watching this gentleman, and this, is, this isn't one of his knives, but at Medford Knives, I like my props, you know me. Um, he sparked something, right? This thing with me and my kid. If, she, if my daughter, if baby's mama was from Texas and she stole my kid and took my kid to Texas, it'd have been a whole different deal, right? But my kid is brainwashed just like that fucking cunt that's the vice president of this country she's a hmm, fuck that brought ain't got a brain neither does the president they're babbling idiots i've seen enough of them talking on tv to <laughs> make me feel very confident in what i say when i talk about them the president the 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 the, 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 the half the fucking time he doesn't make any sense at all and that broad don't get her in a fucking room where somebody's got intelligence and they pin her down on a fucking difficult question. She just, <laughs> anyway, I could pull up tons of material on the both of them, right? They run this fucking country. Are you fucking kidding me? It pains me to speak like this about my daughter. I don't do this with, I'm not flippant about this. You know what I'm saying? I'm not making this video just drives another nail in the coffin when it comes to the death of the relationship to me and my kid. Fuck her. Too fucking bad for you, kid. See, for me, blood can DNA has nothing to do with family. I've had some dynamite foster parents in my life. Not many, but a couple. To this day, Shirley Corey, I love you if you're still around. She was the sweetest lady and she always had my back. Always. Her husband? <laughs> Fucking idiot. Using methamphetamine. When I was in high school. <laughs> He's dead. Mm. Aaron Corey, if you ever see this, I'd love to talk to you, man. He was, he was their kid. He was my foster brother. <sighs> Emotion. It wells up in me sometimes, and I just gotta rein it in. Breaking news. There's always some fucking breaking news. Vladimir Putin this, Biden that. You know what crushed me? What really spurred me to make this video? Young gal stayed behind in Ukraine. 
to help with orphan kids, right? To help feed them because dad had to go fight. No one, excuse me, the war breaks out and everybody splits or goes and fights. And so there's orphanages, I guess, with kids stuck. And, and maybe that's propaganda, I don't know. But, but, but she was trying to get dog food to a dog shelter or something where dogs hadn't eaten in days. And then the car got hit and she didn't make it. And she was trying to feed dogs. That fucking torched me, right? So once I heard that and then watched this gentleman's video who owns Medford Knives, like I said, I'll link his video below. It got the politics in the brain. I've been trying real hard to stay the fuck away from it because of the rift between me and my kid. And, you know, my kid, who almost said something really bad. <laughs> Let's just say, she reminds me of the vice president. Right? Just, I just, politics, man. And I get to talking about it and I get spit and poison. Right? It infects you. It enrages you. Slow down, Johnny. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, how you doing? Look, like I spoke before about trust issues, right? Trust in human beings has been something I've had a problem with since I was a small child, right? Foster parents telling me my mom's dead. She's not. Been lied to and manipulated many times as a child by adults. The only saving grace is nobody ever put it to me when I was a kid, right? At my very first foster homes, knives come in a set. This is the other one. My very first foster home, I slept with a knife on my chest in the sheath. Let me uh, let me show off my. I love my props. I got two. They're different sizes. Is this? Yeah, this is the one that goes in here. But this goes in here, and it's got this little button right, thing. It snaps in there. So when you're scuba diving, right? Anyhow, back on point, Johnny. I slept with a knife like this in the sheath so that I wouldn't cut myself, right? Being in a Boy Scout, they let me have a knife. And if the foster parents, gotta push the button, were gonna come get me, I was gonna stab them in the face if they were gonna molest me. It never happened, but I had that fear because I heard other foster children talk about being molested, right? So I was scared clenching onto a knife to this day. I got a thing for a knife. See, the thing is when you're a child and you get broken, the broken don't go away, right? It turns into a fucking scar. Scars have a way of leaving a mark, right? So, I got a lot of scars, a lot of baggage. Right? And the universe <laughs> has my daughter born in Port, or excuse me, raised in Portland. She was born in Cali, right? That's why mommy got the big fucking paycheck from me. Bled me for 18 fucking years for a daughter I didn't get to fucking raise. So now I sit here on Misfit Island, right? Johnny did it, I'm here. I'm on my island, I'm on 30 acres with a barn, an auto shop. <laughs> a guest house. Two pit bulls right now. And when I can, there'll be more. Probably spring. I'm hoping to get some more dogs in spring. I'm hoping to get things more dialed in and I'm hoping come spring, 
I have another misfit with me. I'm thinking spring's going to bring me at least one more person for the guest house. And the guest house has three bedrooms, so it'd be nice if it was full. Whether it's a mom and her two kids, don't ask me why, just, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know who's going to be there. Male, female, I don't know. Now, if there was a misfit mom and her two children been fucked off, are you kidding me? Little kids go to the local school, mom takes care of her kids, the kids help with the critters, right? I get a chance to be a dad the way I always wanted to be a dad. See, my dogs help me fulfill my fatherly calling, right? I always wanted to be a dad, but my daughter was stolen from me, right? Just like this country is stolen from you. Do you really want to live in this country the way it is? It sickens me the way politics has torn this country in half. When I was a kid, the political views of the world were a lot closer together, right? They weren't so far apart. Fuck your politics. Clearly, I lean way more conservative than I do liberal. But it isn't until recent did I know the difference between a Republican and a Democrat. I couldn't have told you which was which, liberal and conservative. I couldn't have, because I never paid no fucking never mind. I never voted. Couldn't read. So I, I wouldn't know how to vote, right? Go into the booth and try to read all that shit and not, fuck you. And I didn't care. I was a broken foster kid. I didn't give the first fucking thing about politics because you bitches had nothing to do with me. So I never voted. I voted once in my life. George Bush Jr. Because I didn't want us to look weak in the eyes of the world during the war, during the Iraq war. So I backed that little bitch, right? And I got some views on what happened on 9-11, physics and logic. Each to their own. I'm not even going to touch that. You talk about getting your fucking channel fucked off. So back to Misfit Island, right? Hoping by spring I have peeps in that guest house to help me with Misfit Island and I can start getting dogs here. Weather's harsh. There will be no dogs cold. There will be no dogs hungry. So wherever they get housed will be warm and cozy. Like I've said it before and I'll say it again, they're gonna have little apartments. They're gonna be sport run. They won't live in a cage. They'll have little yards. They'll, whether it's indoor, outdoor, it doesn't fucking matter to me. I got this vision in my head what these dogs, the kind of life they're gonna have. They're gonna have the life that I didn't have as a kid. That's why I say, I don't know who's gonna be in that house, but for some reason, a, a single mother and her two kids is screaming at me where I'm thinking I'm going to have some busted up fucking, you know, a PTSD uh, military person or, you know, fucking ex-con or fucking, you know, busted up foster children, whatever. But now all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh, fucking might be a mom and her two kids, homie. You don't even fucking know who's going to be in that house. And I don't. And I don't fucking care. It's what's in here. Right? Because gender doesn't matter when it comes to the doggies and when it comes to getting physical work done I'll do it right but I need somebody to tend to the dogs the chickens the cows right all of this nonsense in these videos all this shit talking I do like I said before, it's so that you will know me and trust me. See, nobody never spoke to me like this to give me confidence in who they were and what they were so that I could trust them, right? 
there's maybe this many people on the planet that I would trust with my life, if I'm lucky. And one of them's my brother, and him and I don't even talk. That has to do with our broken, right? A couple of angry fucks, man. But I miss him very much. We share a lot of the same scars for the same reasons. He's just got a different personality than me, and he spent a couple years in San Quentin, so that will change you. See, I saw mom go to the funny farm. I saw my brother go to San Quentin, and my other baby brother, who's dead now, he went to the Navy because it was either that or go to prison for shooting a rifle in a bowling alley at the fucking bartender. There's a story I ain't told you. <laughs> Hmm, my baby brother Paul, he was the youngest of the three of us, and uh, very emotional, right? Whole fucking family. We got a lot of feelers, but he was drunk, and he was out with my other brother James, and they were both drinking at um, the bowling alley in South City. The fuck was it called? Brentwood Bowl. They were at the bowling alley fucking off. You little kids, man. Paul was junior high school. James was in high school. And uh, my brother James gets in beef with the bartender. And the bartender socked him in the mouth. In fact, fucked up his front tooth. To this day, he's got one front tooth that's different color than the other ones, right? And that was from that night. So my youngest brother, Paul, sees his brother get socked by the bartender and he had a nervous breakdown. As far as I think so. And he ran home and he got his 22 rifle that the foster dad bought him. And he took it to the bowling alley and he was gonna go kill that bartender. He was gonna kill him for fucking hitting his brother. That's how tight we were, right? Three musketeers, that's all we had. Like this tattoo, James, Paul, and then they got the same one anyway. So he goes stomping into the fucking bowling alley with this fucking rifle, ready to kill this guy. And aims the rifle at the bartender and everybody's. And then all of a sudden it clicked. He's like, fuck, I can't kill this guy. I'll go to prison. Oh, but I'm here. I can't just fucking not do something. So he shot around into the bar, freaked everybody out. He left, goes home, gets busted. They told him, dipshit, check this. Either you go to the Navy or you go, or you go to the military or you, you're going to jail, right, kind of thing. So he joined the fucking Navy. And granted, I might have this, that might have been the first incident and then there was a second incident that got him to have to go to the Navy. I forget, it's a long time ago. But irregardless, my baby brother was a wreck. Right, he tried to commit suicide more than once. <sighs> Emotionally, he was like mom, right? He was always right on the edge of a nervous breakdown. In fact, I remember him while he was broken on a nervous breakdown. He was like mom, he would talk and it wouldn't make sense and he would babble and just, oh man, it was fucking harsh to be around him when he was fucking, he went to the funny farm for two weeks. They had him on the fucking psych meds, the whole bit, man. So when I say I've been through some shit and I don't trust people, well, guess what, motherfucker? There's a good reason for it. I mean, it's fucking going on one o'clock in the morning here in Wisconsin, <laughs> and I'm up drinking coffee and talking to you fools. Talking to you fools. Talking to this fucking gadget. <laughs> Fuck. Johnny. Man. Stories, man. There are so many stories up here. That's why I say, sooner or later, I'll get the attention of somebody. Some baller, right? Like I keep saying, Keanu Reeves, 
because he's an INFJ. Something tells me he's got a heart of gold and he's a, he's got them pities in his movies for a reason, man. That just, and I've seen, I don't really follow him. I don't, you know, I don't know what he's all about. I know he rides bikes and he loves pit bulls. And that's all I need to know. That's why I say it'll be a cat like that that does me right so I could do these doggies right, right? That paying it forward thing. A lot of rich people have guilt money, right? They got more money than they know what to do with and it makes them feel like me, guilty, right? Like to me, this property and all this shit, it's, it's too much, man. It's like, I feel like I don't deserve it when I damn well know I deserve it, but it humbles me to have all this, right? And all of this is an $80,000 down payment on 300 grand, right? That's all what all this is. It's not fucking paid off, right? So if I could build this out proper like, It would be fucking magic. Fucking magic. So whether it's a Keanu Reeves or it's a whoever, whatever, fuck out there. One of you bitches is going to drop a big dime on me and I will shine like you can't believe I will shine. The 60-year-old fuck will do magic in God's name, right? I wasn't raised with much religion, but being up here makes me want to go to church, right? Dear Lord, <laughs> save me. <whistles> oh, fuck, this video is 30 minutes long. Shit, 27. Do me a favor, if you make it to the end of this, and those little emojis down below. <laughs> uh, me and my crazy ideas. What did I do with the other one? Oh, it's in the shoe. So if you make it to the end of this video, in those emojis, there's a set of knives that are crossed, right? Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Numbered, limited edition. Put this emoji down below if you make it to the end of the video for me. That tells me you you went to the trouble and wasted, excuse me, went to the trouble and spent 30 minutes of your life on me. And for that, I am extremely grateful. I mean that. The thing is, I know how valuable time is. And tomorrow is not promised. So for you folks to spend 30 minutes watching one of my videos tells me I'm a rock star already. The world just doesn't know it. But for somebody to spend that much time watching something I've done, then there's some quality there, right? There's some heart there that people are starting to believe me. And if you believe in me, please share these videos with someone else that you think will believe. Don't send them to just any schmuck out there. It's a waste of fucking time. It's a waste of your time. It's a waste of my video because they're not going to watch it. But if you know somebody, an INFJ or whatever, somebody with a big fucking heart, like, oh, fuck, you got to watch this guy, man. Look what he did. Mm. Watch this. This stupid gadget sent this to me. This is when I was living on the or in the mobile home park, grew my shit out. And this is two years old. Anyway, my crazy life, man. If anybody's wondering, my best friend owns a tattoo shop. Johnny's never been to the pen, right? But I just do what I do. Only Lord knows why. All right, I'm going to get off this gadget. Much love and respect to each and every one of you. And thank you very much for watching, subscribing, sharing.
taking the time out of your day to believe in me, right? It's like me, I believed in Watson back when he was on that park bench because I could hear the value in his words. I could see the passion in him, what it was he was doing and why, right? Him and I have a lot in common for different reasons. But I understand that drive. I do. That's what got me here, right? And got me off the Jameson. I should be dead, just like my baby brother. But I'm not. I'm still here. My liver didn't give out. I didn't die puking blood on the fucking floor like my wife. Anyway, gotta go. We'll talk soon.